buyer is missing. You receive it with a balance from the creditor, a minimum payment from the seller, and then the buyer is missing. So the buyer is going to come along and be the final one to identify that good. When they do okay. that, when we do that, that's a substitute for the other good that was sent to us. Now it's complete. Now it's complete, right? Now it's it's now it's at home. Mm hmm. Okay, I got you. And then number three, we have nothing in this section impairs any insurable interest recognized under any other statute or rule of law. Like period. There's other okay. sections. Or nothing in this section is going to damage any insurable interest that is recognized under any other state and any other rule of law. Nothing here is going to damage that. That's so fire. there is other rules for insurable interest, you know, and all of that. But we're changing jurisdiction. Nothing here is going to damage and change that from happening. This is the rule of law. We're conducting and performing based on operations of law. And this is just the rule of that law. law. So because we recognize it and, you know, we change this and we switch and judge, nothing is it's not damaged. It's the same. It's recognized. It's okay. It's law. So you can go to your law and find this exact same thing. Unless you live Ooh. in Louisiana. Exactly. Because I found this in my law already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good one. Yeah, I found this in my state. I was like, yo, this is the same. You see, you see. I'm like, oh, this is, I can't wait to start Getting on the ass with this. <laughs> so now yeah. you know a lot about it now. Yeah. You discovered a lot. Yeah, I discovered a lot. And I discovered that this is, like you said, this is the law, this is the operation of how you're actually supposed to be performing when you're dealing with these companies and you're doing business, you know, so you can be, uh, partake in the, uh, promoting, you know, partake in the, engage in a business, you know, engage in the yeah. transaction. Involved, like you said in the beginning, from day one, being involved in the sale at least of these goods. So yeah. this is really, it's all kind of coming together. You know what I'm saying? Like you really have to be involved because if you don't be involved, you're not going to, you're going to, the like you said, identification, the law says this, the identification is still going to occur. What? It still exists. But you failing to be involved, that pretty much is affecting you with, in, in the, in, in, with the E, it's affecting you in the wrong way. But when you are involved, it will affect you in the in a good way. So I got yeah. it. So we know that the buyer has rights because two dash five zero two says the buyer's rights to the good. So you have a right to the good when you receive it. So when you receive it, you should be identifying it because the seller is insolvent when it comes to that because only the buyer can take by accepting that good and identifying it. We have to do right. that. We have to come along and write on that document. That's the buyer's rights because we make that property special. They can't I, do it. I'm going to be honest with you, though. Before you, I don't mean to cut you off. You just got me thinking about something. The buyer's right. Even when I read Article 2A, it starts mm -hmm. with the buyer. So before you even get into this lease agreement, <laughs> say you doing, say you about to rent something. You know, you about to get into a, you about to look for, you looking for yeah. a place to rent. The moment you do that application and all that, you are taking you take yes. it in the position of a buyer. So you're making yes. a purchase before it becomes a, a lease fee less or a title. So you are you're automatically a buyer every time you initiate a transaction with a or you transact with one of these companies. You're autom you automatically yes. the buyer. So this is dope to see this. Automatically. Good discovery. That's exactly what you should know. Automatically. It don't matter what they had you listed as borrower, not listed, not titled, you don't care. You know what you are when you walk in there. You buying something, period. Mm -hmm. You taking a document. You ain't walking there with your own. No, they issued it to it. Yeah. They gave it. it. Yeah. So the buyer has rights whenever the seller is insolvent, whenever they cannot proceed the insolvency by way of filling it in that blank. Right. Exactly. So we got to hey. come in and supplement. Yep. Yeah. Yes, and our buyer's rights is going to help with that. So, subject yeah. to subsection two. And uh, even yeah, though the goods... You're about, you about to have me go get a car now. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm listening. Not you ready. <laughs> you ready? I know I'm you ready. is. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't tried to get this. When I found out this information, I'm like, yo, I'm not getting anything until I'm able to understand what I have to do. Because I was like, even if I got to pay, I want to pay the correct way. I'm not... 
I'm like, I'm not dealing with no cars until I know this. And now you done got me so hyped. I'm ready to listen. <laughs> Let's do it. So even though the goods have not been shipped by a buyer who has paid a part or all of the price of the goods in which he has a special property under the provisions of the immediate proceeding section. So the next section is going to let you know when your buyer rights kick in and you have the immediate right to go ahead and play a part and engage in the seller's business by putting a price on that good. Put the buyer's price that is to be paid on that good. Or okay. make sure I okay. have all of the price on that good. When you have special property. In the next section, 2-503, is going to be speaking about that. They're okay. going to be speaking okay. on making and keeping good a tender of any unpaid portion of their price. Whenever we receive our bill, we have unpaid interest. Whenever we receive our good, we make that property special. That interest is no longer unpaid because that's how we're going to identify the goods before we as a buyer ship it back. Exactly. Exactly. In that case, when we do that, when we receive that tender of any unpaid portion of that price, we can recover it from the seller. If the seller becomes insolvent within 10 days after receipt of the first installment of their price. So when you first receive that document, like how you say you're going to get a card, that first price, that first installment, you can even do it there. You should have mm -hmm. 10 days to do it. So within seven to 10 days, you're going to be start receiving your first bill, going to start generating. And then after that first seven to 10 days, you're going to be locked into your agreement. Okay. Seven to okay. 10 days. So whenever you receive that receipt, you need to identify and recover the good by putting your price on that portion that's missing a price whenever that good is tendered to you. You should do that immediately. You should immediately create that special property by paying the part of the price that belongs to you, making that be in its entire balances, the entire prices. So Seasonable. that you can ship that good and return it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So only thing's missing is the buyer's price. Where's your price? Mm -hmm. We Where see seller's price? price. We see creditor's price. Where is yours? Exactly. The, that's crazy. Like when you just broke that down, the creditor's price, that, that full balance, the seller's price, that minimum payment. Where's mm -hmm. the buyer's? Where is the buyer's missing? So they got a dollar sign in spot. The seller's mm, installment. You tell yep, it can't I do it right. That open price term. Mm -hmm. that's, how we're going to, that's how we're going to mm -hmm. identify the goods. So overstand that in part two, they said if, because you may not identify the good, but if the identification creating your special property has been made by the buyer, you, you acquire the right to recover the goods only if they conform to the contract for sale. If they conform, yep, if. Okay, now, that makes sense. They saying that. So when you identify the good, you create a special property in the good. And that special property is made by you. You have to do that. that. When you do that, you acquire the right to recover that good. Only if it conforms to the contract for sale. If it does not conform, then you cannot. I can't control that. You can control the contract. Right. I can control if I'm if I'm accurate. If you're accurate <laughs> you with know the, what I'm saying? The, with the price that you're including yeah. in that open term. So in the we contract already for sale that's already existing and identified, the first thing that they're going to talk to me about is a pricing chart. Exactly. Price so, exactly. So the nonconformity, you can, you can, you can like alter the nonconformity to conform by including the correct price. Exactly. All right. You're either going to be enclosing an amount that should be included in that price or you're going to be enclosing the total amount due. The All of it or due. portion. Okay. Yeah. Wait a second. All right. So when you say total amount due, see, I'm so used to, uh, you know, now I you got my head wrapped up like the open price term and including the price that's reasonable. You know what I'm saying? So when you say total amount due, are you talking about the whole entire balance? 
that's what they would want some of. So it just depends on the bill. It's a variation by agreement. So some bills you get, wow. they say total amount enclosed, and they want to enclose the total. How much is all of y'all's put together? Enclose it. So I got print payment, interest, and fees. Some of wow. them want to see separate three different prices, so they just want you an enclosing amount that go along with what was already paid. So Damn. you're either going to be okay. paying a part of the price or all of the price. And you're going to make it okay. special when you do it. Okay. See, I'm just going to make this for clarification. So sometimes when you do write in that open, that uh, open, that enclosed amount, when you do write the full, and sometimes people do write that full balance. And I just thought that was like something we wasn't supposed to do. But if it's the total amount enclosed, we actually supposed to be including the whole amount. Totally the entire enough. amount. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, but a lot of times people do that when they don't even say total amount and close. It's just saying right, and that's when they get those provisional settlements or no response okay. or nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't even I didn't even realize that was something that we actually can do. See, but they have to be, but it has to be specified for us to do that. Right. It has to be instructed, right? Instructed, it has to be directed yeah. for us to do it. it that's okay. why they said if it conforms to the contract for sale. So if. Right. <clears throat> What you enclose, whether it's the total amount or an amount due, if it conforms to the contract for sale, then you acquire the right to recover goods. If it don't, then you don't, and your property is not special, and you did not identify it. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, it's, it's, man, you got to understand what's going on, for real. Damn. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Literally. I don't think I ever seen, like, a total amount of clothes. Y'all, I haven't really, I, I might have seen it, but I haven't, I probably wasn't. Oh, paying attention, paying attention. Nah, I'm so I'm gonna post it. yep i'm gonna post them yeah. and sometimes you you really want to pay attention to it because a lot yeah. of times they'll see you your bill with the total amount due already there so in that case that's warranting to you that you're just going to enclose an amount because it's already going to be a part of the total amount that's due they're just waiting for you to come along and make a claim to that price as being the buyer's price they just want you to, 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 to they just want you to enclose literally what you see right there so you they can know that you accept the price like, what do you want? What do you accept? What is your piece included? After wow. the seller tendered the good to you. <laughs> After. So this, they say immediately following this section right here. Because it's not until you receive tender from the seller that you can even think about delivering that good back or reshipping that good. Like, no, they have to give it to you first and then you can identify it. You can't identify until you get it. Exactly. You gotta what are wait you till receive? Right, and that's what they're going to tell us here. What are we getting? Okay. So the manner of seller's tender of delivery. One, tender of delivery requires that the seller put a hold. Ooh. Put a hold. Conforming to the buyer's disposition. <laughs> Volume one. Okay. Yep. So whenever the seller has the good, you as a buyer is at a disposition. Whenever you have the good, the seller is at a disposition. Okay. And give the buyer any notification reasonably necessary to enable him to take delivery. The buyer is going to be giving the seller notification that they that's going to enable him to take the good. Just like the seller is going to send you a conforming good that's going to enable you to take it by writing your document and give them notification because you're at a disposition whenever you receive it because you have yet to identify the price for you. Exactly. So that I'm going to be honest with you, Dave, that alone, there's some conformity to this uh, contract. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. It's like non-conforming and conforming at the same time. Right. You, so they're going to send you a non-conforming good. And you're going to see that on a lot of agreements, too. They're going to be saying non-conforming and conforming. They're going to be flat out, just like that. Conforming and non-conforming. I'm talking flat out. Because they're going to be sending you a conforming good, but that conforming good is going to have some non-conformity within it. Exactly. And it's going to put you at a disposition. It is. Because it's like, be mad so about that. Should I take this minimum payment? Or like, because I want to save some money. But when you know you ain't paying with no USD, you like, fuck that minimum payment. I ain't nobody worry about that. Right, period. I'm not, I'm always going to ignore it because it's going to be included in the prices. The balances. Because exactly. I'm going to come balance. along and add mine and put myself in a good position as if the seller already put me in a good position. Which they kind of did by sending me this conforming good with this non-conformity in it. Allowing exactly. me to have a right to accept it as a buyer. And identify. Right. Absolutely. 
You're, you're, and you're not biased. That reason why that good exists. You're, you're biased, right? You're performing. You performing by listing your 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 the price that's performing to you know that's consistent with the, the seller's requirements. And during the account, that price is going to increase like the value to where the minimum payment is already going to be like non-existent. Like it's going to be more than that. Probably, you know what I'm saying? It's already included. Shit, I see you. All right, cool. Bet. I don't need to think about it. no more about it. Right. Because when I deliver back to you, it's included in the balance. So it's cool. I got you. So this yeah, is like so. in those agreements where they say, why they say we must pay the minimum payment, but we do not pay the minimum payment. Like, oh gosh. the seller must pay you the minimum payment, but you do not have to pay the minimum payment. <laughs> but the seller, right, the minimum payment must be paid, but it don't have to be paid by you. It can be a part right. of the of the balance that you're actually when you're transferring and returning the goods, you know, yes. in its proper proper uh form, it can be paid by the by the, the funds transfer, but not like so that's why they always follow up and say you do not have to pay the minimum payment if you return payment. Right. Oh, man, I got you. <laughs> the manner, time, and place for tender, it is determined by the agreement. Period. This goes back okay. to volume one yet again. What are we going to go back to determine what we're supposed to do? The agreement. That's going to tell us in what way and what time and what place we need to ship our good. Mm -hmm. We need to deliver the good after it was shipped to us. They tell us in the agreement. The agreement right. and this article. Period. That's right. And in particular, two different things. <laughs> two more things in particular. Let's get real detailed about this. Okay. The tender must be at a reasonable hour. So you must get it at a reasonable time. <clears throat> and yep. if it is to be, or if it is of goods, they must be kept available for a period that is reasonably necessary to enable the buyer. So they must be left open for a reasonable hour and a reasonable time to enable us, the buyer, to take possession. And it always is. They send us our mail in enough time. They give us enough time before the due date. Reasonable time. Even, That's necessary. They even, they even give us some time after the due date. So do grace period. They being graceful, appreciative, humble, like, come on, man. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, but, how you right? <laughs> but unless otherwise agreed, the buyer must furnish facilities that's reasonably suited to the receipt of the goods. Period. The proper, reasonable price. Thank you. It has to conform to the contract for sale. We must furnish suitable goods. It must be reasonable. That receipt of goods, when they receive it on return, based on us taking possession of it and reasonably dealing with that good, it must be furnished suitable in order for them to accept it. That's Absolutely. all they want. Absolutely. Now I get I'm following that. I'm telling you, I'm following. I get it. <laughs> Let's talk this talk. It's the first <laughs> Right, for real. Because this is how we bargain and make an agreement. Exactly. Where the case is within the next section. So the other section, the next section, is going to be in respects to shipment attender. And it requires okay. that the seller complies with the provisions. Do you understand Ooh. that? The next session is telling you that the, the shipment that is made by the buyer, the seller must comply? Comply with these operations by law. By law. If the buyer furnished suitable goods. <laughs> if, but it's just like a strict performance on the buyer, though. Like the buyer has to, yep. you know what I'm saying, exercise. You know, strict uh, performance. And then whenever we do perform, we put strict performance back on the seller because they got to comply. Right. If we perform the correct way, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. It just has to be right. It has to be it correct. It has to be, has to be, be correct. Proper. In proper, order to yeah. negotiate, this takes us back to the volumes, too. When in order to negotiate and assign, you must have proper endorsements before you transfer that good. Proper endorsements. Yep. Three. Where the seller. So now they're talking about something that the seller is going to be doing. So if ever you take an action and the seller is required to deliver at a particular destination, tender requires that he comply with subsection one. 
based on how you or whatever you furnished. Okay. Subsection one, and also in any appropriate case, tender documents as described in subsection four and five. So four and five will put more work on the tender wherever it's appropriate. Whenever it is appropriate. And we want them to comply or have respects to the goods that we furnish. There may be some more things that we have to do that's in four and five, but we know for sure the seller is going to do it. Exactly. You ready? All right. Okay. Four. We're goods. So now we're talking about the goods. The goods that we're dealing with. Okay. Where goods are in possession of a bailey. A bailey. Okay. This will take bailey. us down to some articles. <laughs> we talking about some credit, right? Yep. All right. And they are to be delivered without being moved. So it's goods that's going to be in possession of a bailey that are not supposed to be moved. The tender is going to require that the seller either tender a negotiable document or title covering such goods. So that means that the seller is going to have to give up not just a document or title, but a negotiable document or title because they are able to see that it has both the seller and the buyer's price on it before it gets to the bailey. Okay. That negotiable document or title is going to cover the cost of those goods. Mm. Mm, that's a hole in hole. Couple of yes. minutes of time with the buyer. Mm -hmm. Or buyer's right. Okay. Or the seller procure acknowledgement <clears throat> by the bailey of the buyer's rights. So the seller has in their position acknowledgement by the bailey of our rights, our rights to possession of the goods, because we allow for the seller to tender them a negotiable document of title. And not just a negotiable or not just a documented title that they sent to us. We came along, we put our writer on it, and we turned that into a negotiable. A negotiable. Exactly. I like that. I like that because I see. I like that. You know, we just talk about document title. Now we talking about a negotiable. Not, okay, I like right, that. Right, because whenever you transfer with the proper endorsements, exactly. then you have a negotiable document of title now, and the seller is right. able to get acknowledgement by Bailey of the buyer's rights to recover the goods and take possession of that good. Exactly. If you furnish a suitable yeah. good. Exactly. Now they can recover that price. Now they can get that advance. You know, get saying, that uh, uh, yeah, those funds to cover that price. Mm -hmm. No, nah, okay, I see. But <clears throat> tender to the buyer of a non-negotiable document or title. Do you understand that when you get your document and title in the mail, when you get your bill in the mail, that is a non-negotiable document or title. Yeah, because I haven't did nothing to it. I haven't added exactly. any terms. I have. It's just, it's just blank. You haven't returned no it back to the doc to the seller. Right, I have a return to back. You haven't did nothing. So you receive yeah. a negotiable document and title of written direction to the bailey to deliver. It is sufficient tender unless the buyer that's sees the object. That's <laughs> wow. That's because that's literally how all our bills come. Yes. Instructions, directions. And it's non negotiable. And it's non the fucking negotiable. We, and we don't want that's no cash. And that's period. It's not negotiable that you use this. Period. Unless you want to pay another way. Wow. I'm gonna give you so, written direction. So by you by you adding your 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 terms or including making your input on a document, you're making the non-negotiable document negotiable document the title. You said you're when making you it what? A negotiable uh, a document title when you input your terms as a buyer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now that buyer, that seller is able to get an acknowledgement by Bay Lee. None right. of that will happen if you object to doing that good seasonably. If you object to doing it, then it ain't going to happen. Gotcha. But you're going to receive written direction, though. And that's not Absolutely. negotiable. They must send you that. They must tender that to the buyer. Okay. But the That's buyer dope, I mean. has right. the right to take possession of the good and get acknowledgement by the bailey if they return and recover that good to a seller negotiably. So a negotiable document title, meaning that they signed, endorsed it, and transferred it back to the seller so that the seller can take possession of it and get it to a bailey, whether it has to be delivered or moved or not. 
Okay. So we okay. And receipts. So here they let you know that your good is a receipt and you're gonna be a receipt, a receipt. and in possession of a good. Absolutely. So I remember that. So and receipt by the Bailey of notification. So if they're only gonna receive notification if you accept the notice, the fact when it comes and you return it. When you return it, they have notification. Yep. So, and received by the Bailey of notification of the buyer's rights, it fixes. We fix the price. But mm. it fixes those rights as against the Bailey. It fixes the rights against them as a third party or a third person. It's going to fix that by way of stopping infringement. Because I'm the third party to this. And we know that exactly. they're the third party to this. So, we have to go ahead and surrender all of our rights just like they did to us. They surrender all their rights and they sent us that bill. Like, shit, here you go. Exactly. And if I don't, then it's infringement. I got to send you this so I can stop infringement. So I'm be like, no, 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 I'm going to fix this. You can have it. Right. I'm going right. to give up all my rights <clears throat> in the possession of the document to you reasonably. And enough exactly. time for you exactly. to go ahead and reclaim title. And reclaim title. Like, yeah. But no, nah, that makes sense. That makes sense right there. I like that. I like that breakdown. <laughs> but the risk of loss of the goods and any failure by the Bailey to honor the non-negotiable document of title or to obey the direction, it remains on the seller. Until the buyer has had reasonable time to present the document or the direction. So risk of loss remains on the seller until you act, until you perform. And the Bailey is holding them liable. So you know what's so crazy? Do you know it makes me think about that better risk of loss? So I, I used to think it kind of just really applied to us, but it applies to them as well. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And they're not gonna bear that risk of loss for you. So if they already got somebody down their neck imposing liability on them, they're not about to let you come along and pose liability on them too. They're gonna close your account before they let it get that far. Right. You're not about to stress me out and I already to borrow money for you and I gotta pay them back and they on me. I'm relying on you. And yeah, and not, and then like could a bear, and also could the could the the bear risk of loss be when you don't even pay? You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I got obviously they can right. Now it's default. Now it's default. So now we both are bearing the risk of loss, but they may just go ahead and uh, they may just charge go ahead off, and uh, sell it. charge it off, right? You know what I'm saying? And claim it on the on the taxes. Yeah, get a little money from selling that debt to somebody who's gonna collect from you and take that time to hassle you down. Mm hmm. Exactly. I need to, man, that's like, I think that's my next phase is just really tackling those debt collectors, creating that collateral, you know, like that, you know, like you said, they're signing the rights so that they can collect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not doing some more about this, the more I'm confident, comfortable with using the language that's inferred to get the, to give directions to or express my attention. Yeah. Mm hmm express my intentions on how I want to perform to whatever alleged debt that they say is owed. That seller is relying on you because that Bailey is not going to honor a non-negotiable document of title. Period. Right. Only the seller going to honor and you know deal with that. And the seller going to get it to you hoping that you will come on and make this, you know, take this agreement and agree with them so they can pay their they money back. They borrowed it. They got to pay exactly. back. And that Bailey not going to take no document that's incomplete. Uh, no. Hell no. Nah. We don't know that now. <laughs> so a seller or on the seller until the buyer has reasonable time to present the document or the direction. So we help control the direction whenever we present the document identify. Exactly. And a refusal by the Bailey to honor the document or to obey the direct the direction, it defeats the tender. So period. If that Bailey does not honor your good, that's a refusal and it is not going to care about the direction of that tender. So you have to make sure that it is in its correct form and it is fully completed and identified so that the Bailey can honor it. Otherwise, they're not honoring it. They said that. And we also, and most people feel like they have to honor anything you send them. And that's you like don't, crazy. No. Like, no way. They don't that's have insane. to. Yeah, they don't have to. Especially when you think you're That's somebody yeah, who thinks the world revolves around them. Exactly. 
This time you like, like it. 